Hey, welcome back into today's video. It's been a couple days, but I'm back now. And yes, we're going to be talking about the uh, situation with Shane Dawson. And then my next video after this, we're going to be talking about Jeffree Star. Stay tuned. Things have been crazy. Are you ready? I'm ready. Shane Lee Yaw, known professionally as Shane Dawson, is an American YouTuber, actor, writer, comedian, director, makeup artist, and musician. He was one of the first people to rise to fame on the video sharing platform, YouTube, and has since maintained an online presence. Shane Dawson's YouTube channel is over 20 million subscribers, and uh, he was releasing documentary videos that were... Um, uh, a course of a lot of criticisms and they would draw in massive views but he released a statement about the drama getting situation and it didn't turn out very good in his favor now this statement since been deleted but you can find it in uh, death noodles twitter i'm going to put the link to this into the description below there were a lot of things about this statement that really just didn't rub people the right way. One of the biggest was him saying about James Charles that, do I think James is the devil? No. Do I think he was young, egocentric, power hungry guru who needed to be served a slice of humble pie the size of the effing Empire State Building? Yes. Has he grown as a person since then? It really seems like it. Many people were quick to point out that false allegations of someone being a predator <laughs> do, does not uh, constitute a big slice of humble pie. There's been a development, more about this later. He went on to say that many beauty gurus joined the side of the internet that is obsessed with looks, money, power, fame, screenshots, subtweets, releasing private text voice memos. Uh, I think it's very curious that he puts voice memos in the list here. And we'll get into why I think this is curious later in the video. Then says, yes, Jeffrey is on that list of dramatic gurus. And he would admit that. And he will always be family to me. And I love him despite those characteristics. A lot of people were saying that this was um, making him complicit in a lot of very bad things in Jeffree Star's past. And let's be honest, when it comes to the scandals, Jeffree Star is another person that's quick to do what I would like to call blanket apologies. The internet says that blanket apology is a scripted, rehearsed, and stored regret that covers the infinite situations of fault. An unimpressive unit of speech that, when expressed, lacks connection, emotion, or revelation. A sentiment of sorrow that has no unique relationship to the wronged audience. Now to me, when I first read this statement, it was clear to me that it just did not seem, it just felt wrong because he kept bringing up his uh, mental health as an excuse for this or that, um, his depression, his anxieties, and different things like that. Almost as if to say that if you found anything wrong with what he was saying, you couldn't really um, call him out on it because then you'd also be hurting him because he has these mental health issues and I don't think that that's the right way to go about it. For example, number eight here at the very beginning of the statement, it says, am I innocent and don't have huge anxiety provoking regrets about how I could have helped everyone handle everything better? No, I have had a pit in my stomach since it all happened. Huge anxiety provoking regrets. And another part saying, so go enjoy the gurus, enjoy the circus. Unsubscribe from me if you are mad that I'm no longer engaging in it. Now, I personally believe that, yeah, there's probably a lot of uh, bad things going on. It's, it's dog eat dog in the beauty guru world. Like there's always tea, there's always drama. It would give me a pit in my stomach too. But the way that the statement came out, the hypocrisy that it consisted with, and the almost knowing complicity of things that Jeffree Star's done wrong in the past and just being okay with that, really added up to what I would like to call the perfect storm. In another piece, he did address the uh, James Charles humble pie statement saying, me saying he needed to be humbled isn't mean it's honest. And he said that in his own video, should the humbling have happened off camera? Yes, which I said, but I guess I didn't word that right. Um, this isn't mean it's honest. That wasn't worded right either. I actually don't know what that means. If anybody else knows what that means, please let me know in the comment section below. Um, like again, I think that most people were more concerned with false predator allegations that uh, nearly ruined the man's life, and he's still having to struggle with today. Keep in mind when he talked about voice memos, 
I do think it's important to talk about this. Blair White came out with a video. We're in this video. She pretty much uh, called out Jeffree Star, but there was one piece in it. Let's play it. This video is titled, By Jeffree Star, You Are a Monster, My Experience. He then provided me with receipts of a voice memo from a YouTuber who was allegedly sexually molested by James Charles. And it's credible. It's a YouTuber, it, it's credible. It is not my place to out this YouTuber's name at all. I have privately reached out to this YouTuber and said, hey, I'm a rapster ever myself because I am. And I should never have been told this, but I wanna let you know it's okay to go public with your story. It's okay to be heard. Or even just to talk to me if you need to because I am a survivor myself. So I'm in shock after being given this information by Jeffrey and then Jeffrey proceeds to tell me, James will never attack me because I have this on him. I have shit on everyone, which he has said publicly before. I have shit on everyone. Because I have dirt on everyone and they know to keep their mouths shut. Now, I don't know if anybody else has sort of made that connection yet with the voice memo and the statement and what was said in the voice memo to what Blair White says here, but it just goes and adds more of the it shows more of the hypocrisy in the statement in itself. One thing I really didn't understand about this entire situation was if there's a voice memo and evidence of somebody uh, committing some sort of sexual predation on somebody, uh, specifically uh, raping them, and, and there's there's evidence, I'm, I'm almost 100% sure that that's a crime. And I just feel, and I don't, like I said, I'm not a lawyer, I don't know the legalities of these types of things, but it just feels very com complicitly illegal. I don't know, but for me, it's not, it's not rubbing me the right way. And I also don't doubt that Jeffree Star's using this piece of information to keep uh, James Charles in control and sharing it with other people to hold some power. You know, retrospectively looking at this video, I, I see that I'm I'm pretty sure Blair White is feeling like the no acknowledgement and knowledge of this information was the burden that Jeffree Star put on her and made her feel like she had a ton of bricks on her back and maybe she herself feels stuck because she doesn't want to out this person. And uh, she, it, it's a, it seems like a complicated situation, but at the root and cause of this, we do see that it is Jeffree Star. Hmm. And of course, you can't acknowledge that fact unless you acknowledge the fact that Shane Dawson is complicit with his friend's characteristics uh, verbatim in the statement. He even acknowledged the voice memo. So he, you, you got to put two and two together there. To me, it looks like he knows full well what the what the voice memo is and has this same kind of knowledge. And maybe it's even he feels like it's it was a large weight to shoulder. But the point is, is this made a lot of people angry, a lot of people. So when you see a statement released with such hypocrisy, um, it tends to draw a lot of attention. And this attention came, and Shane Dawson was yet exposed further for a pattern of pedophilia <laughs> behavior. This was really kicked off when he deleted the statement saying, I deleted everything, I'm done. For those who wanted me to address it, I did. I'm sure you can find it reposted somewhere, but I don't want this energy in my life or on my timeline. I'm too sensitive for this stuff, I'm done. And again, every time he says anything to do with anything about this kind of stuff he always throws in he's too sensitive this was a live look during that week that shane dawson released the statement he was bleeding uh followers on twitter and today the losses are massive just on twitter alone over on the red twitter if you're not following it you should follow it we there's a lot of uh, cool things over there like uh positivity turtles and uh informative news clips so there was this one clip that surfaced it was shane dawson sexualizing a then 11 year old willow smith the daughter of jada and actor will smith oh willow oh i'll whip your hair back and forth oh, oh. now to be completely clear i'm not going to show everything but i will put a thread in the description because the amount of material that came out that was misogynistic racist uh, anti-semitic the this the amount of stuff it's extremely overwhelming um i i did say 
the, there was this controversy that was drug up last year, if you guys remember, um, back when everybody was giving Shane Dawson the benefit of the doubt. I too somewhat gave him the benefit of a doubt when Anision himself made a, uh, a, a sort of a, a documentary saying that Shane Dawson um, was guilty of these types of behaviors. This is what I said in my video. Yeah, it is a little bit out of context and it's hard to say, oh, well, this is bad because it is a character and it is like, that's the joke. And uh, I feel like Onision's missing the joke. See, Shane Dawson, Dawson has said these things in the past and I'll be honest with you, I don't agree with the things that Shane Dawson said I do think the things that Shane Dawson said are wrong. He should never say anything Sexually about a child in any context joking or not the fact that he did he did it in his videos in an edgy time It's a little bit forgivable, but he did say these things on a podcast And that's what the pop blast controversy was about. It was exposing Shane Dawson of being a pedophile So at the time that I made this video clearly the things that Shane Dawson was saying and doing was was not right But I didn't know the depth. I didn't know how many instances there was I didn't know the the wide range of pattern of behavior of these things and when you put that in perspective I feel like a lot of the things that I said in that video are I want to say now outdated. I was solely basing it off Anision's perspective and to be completely honest with you I didn't really trust anything that Anision was saying at that time. Since this was based around the pop blast stuff and the pop blast stuff uh, was shown to be a not credible source. I tweeted on June 26 about Shane Dawson It's a pattern of behavior that runs to current. Some of the things I've seen today are much worse than what I've shared on Twitter. I personally could never be okay with this. No excuses. There are no justifications for pedophilia, <laughs> which I've heard him argue. I love you too. Can you twerk for us? I know twerking is insane. Oh, I love you too. Oh, I love you too. No, shut up and twerk. Maybe she can't hear us. Okay, wait. Okay, okay. Twerk for us. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. She's moving in front of us. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Good yeah. girl! <laughs> yeah, now tell her to show herself. Stop it, Shaylee. <laughs> Love you. Oh. There were so many just unjustifiable things. Like, the, it comes to a point, and I've said this before, where it's it's not comedy and it's, it's not edgy humor and there were people that were saying it was a different time no because back in even that time uh sexualizing a child in this sort of uh, predatory behavior was not okay it's never okay no then he came out with the apology that let's be real was a replication of jenna marbles um he i feel with the timing, he, he, I, I feel safe in saying that he was trying to do what she did and a lot of people saw the red flags. In fact, the red flags in Shane Dawson's apology video, claiming he felt inspired by Jenna Marbles to make it, separating himself from the issues, phrases like, I hate that person who did those things. That person is you, own up to it. Uh, saying he no longer holds racial ideals while being close to friends with two known racists, Trisha and Jeffrey. Using I had a traumatized childhood as an excuse. That's another good point. I did not have a good childhood. I know there's a lot of us out there that had unfortunate childhoods, yet we somehow made it through without being a, a transphobic, racist, anti-Semitic. Glossing over the pedophilia <laughs> claims, considering how much disgusting evidence there is, claiming he knows his friends are problematic, but it's okay because he uh, talks to them about it in private. Victimizing himself, I know I'm horrible. I deserve to have my career destroyed. No one has to forgive me. Classic manipulative tactics to garner sympathy. Saying his ridiculous tweets regarding the extreme allegations were a joke once he was called out. Justifying his actions by placing the blame on others. My friends told me it was okay. They thought it was funny. As if he isn't a grown man who can think for himself. And then finally not addressing that he made money and continues to profit off his racism. Selling Shanene merch and keeping all of those videos monetized. Massive amounts of hypocrisy. Terrible apology. These are just my opinions. You let me know what you think. We can agree to disagree. We can talk about it. Just let me know. Shortly after that, Jada Smith tweets to Shane Dawson, I'm done with the excuses. And then her son Jaden Smith says, Shane Dawson, I'm disgusted by you. You sexualizing an 11 year old girl who happens to be my sister is the furthest thing from funny and not okay in the slightest bit.
then follows up saying this man was also doing blackface on the regular as youth we need to support creators who support us and our morals this is not okay another thing i feel like is important to point out here is that uh I, on June 20th, I tweeted, Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson are like two peas in a pod, where uh, it can be shown in uh, 20, 2010, they both sexualized Justin Bieber, who would have been around 16 years old at the time. So stay tuned in our next video, where we go over how Jeffree Star is in fact probably not self-made and a little bit more of the hypocrisy of him. I'm going to be working on this video. Maybe I can get it out tomorrow. If not, it will be out the next day. I am going to try to do a lot more videos in the month of July because a, a positivity turtle. Hold on, let me show you. Positivity turtle. And I'm going to explain to you guys that if you just kind of, is it not going to show it? All right, positivity turtle. So the story behind this is my mother gave this to me and I didn't mean for it to like, I didn't mean for this to like be a big thing. But now every time I go in any other creator's live stream, and they see me, they spam the turtle, and I think it's really cool. Like I said, I didn't expect that. Uh, on my birthday, my mom got me this turtle. And uh, she got it for me so I can put it right here in front of me. And uh, it, to keep me positive while I'm making videos. Because she knows making videos and doing content creation and stuff, it can sometimes be very, very stressful on me. On all of us. But uh, I just want to get, give you guys a backstory because... Uh, as interesting as this, there's always something more interesting to me. That's right, you guessed it. Why don't you do that? Leave your creative and your interesting responses in the comment box below. Thumbs up for those likes. As always, brothers and sisters, I will see you in the next video. I messed that up, but uh, I would like to thank my patrons. You guys are the best patrons. I have the greatest patrons on the planet of the planets forever. Always the greatest patrons. Um, you guys were the inspiration for a lot of things on the channel a lot of the merch and stuff like that and i really appreciate that we're really doing good over there in fact we're almost about to hit another milestone so if you want to be a, a patron and help us get to the next uh the next goal i think we're only like maybe 60 dollars away from the next goal then and you do that if you feel like you want to fully your your move um other than that i did a photo shoot with the new merch piece which if you want to if you guys want to wear my face i don't know why you'd want to do that but if you are a fan of my hair and face and stuff like that uh you can do that this is the pictures that we took here yesterday and i uh, posted on instagram and it's it's very good it's really cool and uh if you want to go over on the instagram i'll put the link in the description you guys can give that a like because it's the first time i ever did a somewhat of a photo shoot for merch and uh i think that's it because it's just another way to show that you're ripping. If you're not ripping, hey, do that. I'm going to do subscribe and notifications. Be in the comment section for every single video because I'm going to be there. Greg the Cat's going to be there. And the rest of the Red Sox community as well. And I expect to see you there too because this channel loves you. I feel like I forgot something. I'm so rusty in making videos, man. Mm, mm, mm.